in this series called Hot Topics. And let's all say it together. We're what? We're humble, open, transparent. Oh, that was weak. Come on, we need to do that again in the room. We are people that are humble, open, and transparent. And tonight we have the awesome opportunity uh, to hear from one of my friends, uh, Bonnie Jo. And, and Bonnie is a, a mental health therapist. And y'all, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the hot topic of mental health tonight and how faith and therapy collide. Uh-oh, come on somebody, look at your neighbor and say, it's about to go down. All right, but hey, can you put your hands together? I wanna introduce to some, present to others. Bonnie Joe Daniels, come on up here. We're excited to have you. Hey, you go ahead, grab a seat. Excited for tonight. Guys, doesn't this feel like there's having a living room conversation tonight? Wow, this is so fun, so fun. But hey, um, guys, like I said, we're excited that you're at college night tonight. We're excited that uh, we get just to have some honest, open, transparent conversations. And Bonnie, we'd love for you to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you, your background, why you're at Christ Fellowship, why you're even in the room tonight, but man, we're grateful to have you. In two minutes or less, right? now. Yes. <laughs> My name is Bonnie Jo Daniels, and it is just such an honor to be here. This is the age group that I love the most. You guys are my jam, um, so I love it. And a little bit about me, I've been on staff um, at Christ Fellowship for 11 years. I've looked over, yay. <laughs> I've looked over the um, anti-human trafficking initiative over those 11 years and worked with survivors of trafficking. Um, I'm a licensed mental health clinician and I have a private practice. Um, and just recently I got asked to adjunct professor for intro to psychology. So I see a few of my students Come out on. here. Yay. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, friends, I, I wanna bring you in on the conversation because this is a conversation that we've strived away from in the church. That mental health has kind of been this taboo subject that no one else has really talked about. And either you're, you're one side or the other. Like God can heal you instantly or it's medicine. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, mm -hmm. I've wrestled with this too. And my, our hope tonight is that we can bring some clarity around this conversation, uh, that we can bring hope around this conversation as well. And we can actually talk about some of the taboo stuff in church. Come on, someone say amen. Amen, amen. 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 It's time to have some conversations. But before we start, um, honest, open, transparent. I, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Alec, I'm your friend, hi. Um, <laughs> but, but secondly, uh, as a pastor, I struggle with panic attacks. Wow, did some walls just come down for a second? Oh my gosh, I felt it in the room. And I, and I want us to hear this tonight because I think sometimes we hear these words and we're like, you? Not you, only me. But the truth is tonight that every single one of us, we struggle in this area and, and Bonnie, you're human as well. I'm human as well. As a, as a therapist, I saw trauma firsthand when I was working with survivors, um, but I have to go the backstory and tell you that I too struggled with anxiety and panic attack, um, walking with my parents. Again, I would love your age group because it was your age group to where I struggled the deepest in my walk. My parents both became ill and incapacitated at the same time. And my sister and I had to make those life decisions on what we're gonna do in that process. And um, there were too many decisions, too many doctors, too many uh, yes or no to medications and surgery surgeries, it came at us too fast and it was too long. It was over a long period of time. And uh, unfortunately, my, my parents um, both passed. My mom passed and then my dad passed shortly thereafter. And um, right after that, my sister and I both had panic attacks out of nowhere. Wow. We both went to the doctor. We thought we were, we were dying, like, because yeah. it feels like a heart attack. Um, my sister decided to go to the doctor and get prescriptions, and she went ahead and, and got on some medication and was stabilized in a couple of months. Wow. I was trying to be the big old Christian to do it like the natural way. <laughs> 
Um, I'm trying to like put my big girl pants on. Um, to this day, I don't know if that was the right decision because it took me a long time to get my biology of my body back into wow. sync. It took me almost two years to get my sleeping and my eating and all of that in sync. And so I stand today with both sides and that's how I work clinically with my patients. Yeah, and so I want you to hear Bonnie's story for a second. She is healed from it yeah. now, but it took two years mm -hmm. of, of hard, hard work, work. Hard, of, of mm -hmm. counseling and, and hard work. And I also wanna bring my perspective in for a second. Uh, I remember the first panic attack I had, I, I went to my Bible, right? I pulled out the sword of the spirit. Come on, somebody. And I was ready to go. And, and funny enough, I was delivered instantly. But what I want you to hear tonight is Alec, pastor, spirit-filled Christian, got healed instantly. Mm -hmm. Bonnie, mm -hmm. mental health therapist, spirit-filled Christian, mm -hmm. got healed over two years. Mm -hmm. One is not right, one is not wrong. Mm -hmm. And tonight we really wanna bridge this gap of, of faith and medicine because Bonnie's healing is not wrong and my healing is not wrong either. And I think we have to understand tonight that our God heals, yeah. but we are not the one to choose how he heals. And we also can't criticize other people for their healing journey. Mm -hmm. I feel like someone needs to hear that tonight. We, we can't criticize others for the, the journey of healing that God has that person on. And I, and I hope you can see both of us tonight as a symbol of God does healing in both ways. The biggest struggle I think is with Christians that have their faith and they're wondering why can I not overcome this if I am a person of faith? And I, br I brought my little, <laughs> this is gonna be so silly, but this I keep this in my office when clients come to me with this issue and I say, you know, the red here represents Jesus. It's the cross. It's what Jesus did on the cross and you need to remember who you are in Christ as you're walking through this journey. Yep. And then there's this green little twin wine that goes around and that in John 15 it says we were supposed to abide in Christ. Yep. I abided for two years. I'm telling you I've done more prayer walks. I broke through some more <laughs> battles. I've done, I mean I feel like I've tackled spiritual warfare but you have to abide in Christ. What the enemy is trying to do is to get you away and make you feel like you're something other than the body of Christ. That's great. And then the blue here is the representation of God's will, God's way, and God's time. We cannot determine that for ourselves or for anyone else. It is up to God. I mean, currently right now I have two friends battling with cancer. And one, unfortunately, we just buried. They went through the, the same chemo journey. The other one is still with us. I can't explain why God takes one and not the other. Yep. I can't explain why chemo works for one and may have not worked for the other. Yeah. I can't explain those things, but I can remember this as a symbol. My job is to honor God and abide in him. That's great. Yeah, and I think, Bonnie, I th and if I can be honest for a second, if everyone in the back, here we go, here it is. We'll get a big one next time. But uh, I think for us, the, the green is what we need to remember, that before we struggled, you were called to abide. Before you knew you were struggling, you were called to abide. Uh, abiding is actually our, our, our default. Now, the enemy is very good at pushing you away from the body of Christ. He's very good at pushing you away from people. He's very good at pushing you away from abiding. So I, I want us to hear tonight that if you are struggling your first call is, is to make sure as a son and a daughter, yeah. you are secure in that relationship with Jesus. Absolutely, absolutely. Take, take a moment and step forward. If, you, if you're not sure, do it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you really focus on staying close to him during that time of journey. Yeah. That is really your healing journey and your healing process. And, and if you need help with that, that's where counseling can come in. Yeah, and Bonnie, while we're on the idea of counseling, and uh, let's all look at our neighbor and just say counseling for a second. Come on now, look at your neighbor and say therapy, <laughs> right? Like we, we need to be okay with saying these words. Uh, do we need to do it again or no, we good? We, we good, all right, cool. 
But, but we need to be okay with, with saying these words. And, and Bonnie, I would love to hear from your side again, mm -hmm. Christian, but also rooted in, in biology and science. W what does therapy do for the mind? Mm -hmm. what, what does counseling do for the mind? Mm -hmm. Some of the benefits of therapy. Um, first of all, you wanna seek out a Christian therapist because yep. you wanna have that spirit alignment, first of all. Um, but what therapy can do is therapy can help take a look if you're having a distorted thinking pattern. Maybe there's negative thoughts and there's a pattern of negative thoughts and that's what's actually tripping you up. Maybe you're in a relationship that is not maybe the healthiest for you. It might be toxic and you don't have the strength to walk away. Uh, therapy can really t help you to take a look at who you are and do you deserve that type of relationship? Is it moving you towards Christ or away from Christ? It helps you to get grounded. It's a healthy, safe person um, to process with in your journey. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love even, Bonnie, for you to kind of touch on this, uh, therapy takes your view from like an in the now, it's almost like a 30,000 foot mm -hmm. view of your life, like holistic mm -hmm. approach. And we'd love maybe to see even hear about some of the practical things that you walk through with people in therapy when you're looking at a 30,000 foot view. Yeah, practically, if somebody's coming into my office, I'm, I'm looking at basically what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with anxiety? We, are we dealing with depression? Are we dealing with an unstable mood that's you know moving around? And, and so we have to identify that first. And then we try to see if that person knows where these factors are coming in that's causing that. What's causing the depression? What's causing the anxiety? If we, and sometimes people don't know, but you, believe it or not, it's called self-awareness and we're not always that self-aware of what things are going on in and through us and around us. We just aren't. And so a lot of times when I'm sitting with people, I'm looking at, well, how often is that happening to you? How intense is it when it is happening? And for how long has it happened? Because that's starting to determine to me, maybe this is situational. You just broke up with your, your um, partner, right? And you, you had got, a and bad you, day. You just had a bad day. You just yeah. had a bad day. And it may be a bad week and maybe you really thought that this person was going to be your spouse and so it might be lingering you know for a little while um, but is that really clinical depression or is that just we have a really bad breakup of something that we were longing for yeah absolutely and I think that's that's great perspective Bonnie and I don't know if you've seen this but TikTok is self-diagnosing people now like if you struggle TikTok with this is you... causing fear in you all yes so. <laughs> You heard it here. Delete TikTok off your phone to live a happier life. Um, but, <laughs> dang, we got some claps in the front row. I love it. But you did touch on this, that like we're, sometimes we're easy to self-diagnose mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. And I think you're right. Like even going to talk to someone about, okay, this was, you had a bad day. Mm -hmm. You need to try again, take a nap, mm -hmm. eat some food <laughs> and go about. And, and I think sometimes that's healthy for us yeah. to hear those words. It's like, no, you're not this. Yeah. You, yeah. you just had a bad day. And, and Bonnie, I know we were talking in the back. You even said there's some very physical like aspects of sleep and diet. And would, would love as, as we're in yeah. college, come on. I, I was in college before. Anyone know about the college triangle? Anyone know about this? You can have a social life, good grades, and sleep. But you can't have all three. You can only pick two. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I would love to kind of hear even your perspective on this because... Yeah college, freshman year, we're not with our parents anymore. Uh, if we're not at PBA, we don't have a curfew. Like there's a lot of things that mm -hmm. can get out of whack very early. Yeah, freedom is very wide, <laughs> right? And, and God's road is very narrow, but freedom is so wide that we can not really understand the, the boundaries of our own biology. Um, you've gotta remember, we are a tent, and a tent is not a home. Our permanent home is in heaven. That's right. So a tent is movable. It's safety and protection, but you've gotta care for this tent. The tent happens to be your humanness, and your humanness has certain boundaries. For example, sleep. Every morning when you wake up and you take a look at that rising sun, biologically what's happening is it is setting a biological clock in your mind of when you're gonna go to sleep, wow. okay? So if we're suffering from depression, we're having a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. We might be getting up at two and three in the morning. We're struggling with our sleep because biology is wired 
to us. And so um, but sleep is super important. Every 24 hours, it's a reset. If you try to, to go rogue and go too many days in a row, your anxiety is going to build because your sleep has not given you the opportunity to really process wow. all the content that's come, every conversation you had, everything you've seen, everything you smelt, tasted, touched, all that has to go into a filing system every single night. So sleep is very, very important. I've never thought about sleep like that before in my entire life, to be I, honest I with you. I could spend hours on sleep had, and my students know. <laughs> I had no, yeah, but I mean, you're right. When, when you stay up for so long, your thoughts just, they just build and they build and they build. And I, uh, maybe this is not the right analogy, Bonnie, tell me if I'm wrong. I am not the mental health therapist in the room. I have a marketing degree from Palm Beach Atlantic University, but... <laughs> But if we allow our thoughts to build, it's almost like a balloon that's just blowing and getting yeah. bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger. And if we never have that time just to process, like mm -hmm. you can only take in so much. You can only take in so much, but not only does your thoughts grow, your irritability grows because you haven't had rest. So you're gonna be a little more anxious around people, a little short with them, a little rude. Sarcasm seems to come out. All of these things start to pop out if you don't have sleep. So. Yeah. And what about, what about diet? Let's talk about PBA Second, calf. So think of four legs on a table. I'm gonna give you four things. Okay. First one is sleep. Second one is your food intake. Food has to have protein. If you don't have protein coming into your system, you cannot make the neurotransmitters. I'm gonna get nerdy on you for a moment. You so cannot grilled, make the neurotransmitters. So grilled cheeses are not the best thing for me every day. Oh my goodness, no. Okay. <laughs> 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 Nor donuts every day. It doesn't have a lot of protein. We need protein. Um, it's biology again, guys. It's breaking down of components as you're eating, swallowing, digesting. These components are going back and creating neurotransmitters in your brain, which creates dopamine, which creates serotonin, neuropinephrine. I could go on. We need those to properly regulate our emotions. Okay, without the right amounts, it can push us into anxiety and depression. Wow, so that was, you said two legs. Two legs, third leg, you ready for this one? Hydration. Uh-oh. Okay, water drinking, hydration. Hey, where are all the hydro flasks in the room? Put them up, anybody <laughs> got yours today? No, Stanley's, Stanley's, oh, okay, we got a, a bottle in the back, there we go. Come on, hey, give yourself a pat on the back. You're staying, Carlos, that is Starbucks, that is not hydration, no, wrong. <laughs> If you do do Starbucks or any other coffee, then you have to increase your water because it is taking away the water out of your body. That's why we go to the bathroom. Too much information. Okay, <laughs> so water. Water is super important. Um, all of your organs need it. Um, everything has toxins in it. We, what we eat, drink, smell, food, all of that. So we've got to get rid of them out of our body. We've got to continually flush. Um, your brain is the last organ to get cleansed. So if you're not drinking enough, you're gonna, your body's going to feel achy. You're going to yeah. be a little clouded uh, with your thinking. Okay, so hydration is super, super important. Half of your body weight. Okay, so whatever you weigh, half is in liquid water. Wow. All right, so we got sleep, mm -hmm. nutrition, hydration. What's our fourth leg? Exercise. Okay. Okay. Go take a walk. Go take a walk, but get your heart rate up. <laughs> so, so walk briskly. You, um, exercise is so important for this body, for bone development, bone structure. It's so important to fight against our anxiety. So when we're walking, we're actually building up enough fight so that when you get a bad day, bad news, bad phone call, you have the energy to fight against something that is considered just a natural, you know, bad news. Wow. Without your energy and your exercise, um, you're going to be de depleted. I have colleagues that will not accept you as a new uh, patient if you don't have some type of exercise routine. Wow. That's how important it is to mental health. That's it's crazy. a direct connection. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and friends, I, I want you to hear this conversation. I know some of this is very practical, and we're going to dive into some, some deeper questions, but I, I want you guys to embrace feedback. Some of us don't embrace feedback. Some of us are actually scared to go to a place because they're gonna tell me what to do. Can I tell you, I still need someone to tell me what to do. All of us, we, we need someone to look at us in the eye and be like, you're not sleeping enough. You, you need to get more sleep. 
You're, you're not drinking enough water. You, you need to drink more. Like we need feedback in our lives. And I also wanna encourage you real quick, if you're a part of uh, Palm Beach Atlantic University, FAU, um, PBSC as well, you guys have free mental health counseling on campus that you can take advantage of. Now, I know that some of us, we're gonna take that step out of this room, but for some of you, you just need to go have a session. And can I tell you, one session is gonna be worth it for you just to talk and clear the air and actually get some practical tools that are gonna help you live this life to the fullest. And uh, Bonnie, kind of wanna dive into our faith and mental health conversation. Uh, I've kind of grown up in, in both areas where it's like, well, hey, you're struggling with depression. You need to pray that away. And for some people that's hurtful because they've, tr they've tried. I've been praying for two years when I had all that anxiety over my parents being sick. Yeah, yeah it was we, never stopping. And how do, how do we wrestle with, with both? Yeah, you know, again, I go back to my analogy, but um, you have to know that God is a very individual God, and he's doing something very individual in your heart, mind, and soul. So your journey and someone else's journey is going to look completely different because your purpose is different than my purpose. Yeah. So what I get to do now is because of what I went through back then. And what I didn't tell you in my two year struggle with my parents who were um, ill and these panic attacks and all this spiritual warfare is my father and mother were both Catholic um, and I was Catholic growing up. My father, three months before he passed, received the Lord and three days before my mom passed, she received the Lord. Wow. All of that was encompassed in all of that bad journey yeah. And so is it faith? Is it a medicine? Why is God gifting some people with brilliant minds to really understand and be your doctors and psychiatrists? Why, why is he doing that? He's doing it because for some people that is going to be a piece of their healing journey. Yeah. Okay, what about the research that goes into medications? Is there an enemy that's gonna abuse them? Yes, there is. It, should you go on it right away? No, do your research, do your prayer, but don't forsake it if your ability is not to get stabilized again, yeah. you might need that medication. And I, I would love for you to touch on that because I've heard testimonies of people being like, I'm too depressed to pray. Mm. And I would love to know how medicine can actually help us mm -hmm. biologically get back to a place where we are more ourselves. First of all, if you're in the room and you're struggling with depression and you feel like you're too depressed to pray or to speak, um, just I wanna encourage you with one thing. Put on some worship music, even if you don't sing, if you can't even get the strength to sing, it will seep in the pores and the cells of your mind and your body. Um, and and when, you're, when you're dealing with depression, our, your biology is off, okay? Your serotonin and your dopamine levels are off. And so you don't have enough gas gas in your car to go anywhere. You are the car, there's not enough gas in the car to go anywhere, okay? And so um, you're, you're going to feel like you can't move. And so sometimes when you're in that situation, I don't know of any of you that have tried to start a car with no gas, any guys in the room? It doesn't work, okay? It just doesn't work. Um, and so medication will help put gas into your car so you can start moving about. You don't have to stay on it forever. Work with your doctor, don't go off fast. That's all I gotta say. Work with your doctor, don't go off fast, but get the gas in your car so that you can begin to have life again. Yeah, and I love that, Bonnie. And I think that's helpful for all of us to hear in the room is that some of us, like medicine is allowing us to get back to a level where like faith and praying can, can enter mm -hmm. the picture. And Bonnie, I love that we can talk about this because we need, we need both. Yeah. And for some people in the room, they, they may be at that place, but friends, I also wanna let you know that like one in five people in their lives are gonna struggle with depression at one point or another. So there's either someone in the room that's going through it, yep. about to go through it, just got through the tail, end of it, and our hope tonight is this, is that if you are struggling, that you can have some honest conversations tonight uh, around this area, but maybe you're, you're not struggling. Can I tell you that trials are always coming our way? Uh, I remember I never had a panic attack before until I first had a panic attack, and, I, and I'm grateful that I actually had tools and people around me that 
prepared me to actually enter the conversation before I was even there. So, so friends, I, I don't want you to tune out tonight if you're like, that's not me. Listen, we either know someone or it's gonna be us that's going through it. And Bonnie, as we're wrapping up, we'd love to know how do we support our friends mm -hmm. that, that are also going through mental mm -hmm. health? Yeah, you, we gotta remember we're coming into these walls for peace, for love, right? We're not coming in these walls for judgment. And so um, one of the first things that you can do is be okay walking with someone that is going through a struggle in their life. Um, take the stigma out. Start the conversation. Remember I told you self-awareness. We don't always know what's kind of going on. Um, your friends and your family are generally the first ones to pick up on, are you okay, Alex? <laughs> you know, is anything going on? Do we, you know, they're usually the first ones. And so walking alongside of them, um, diminishing the stigma. Stop and listen. Stop and pray. I know these sound very, you know, but we're so busy. We're so busy right. um, that we don't have time to really walk with people. And, and I think back of when Jesus was walking on Calvary and he was carrying the cross, there was one point where he was completely exhausted and Simon came and helped him carry the cross. Yeah. Simon came alongside, but guess what? Simon couldn't go on the cross and be crucified. Jesus could only go on the cross. So what am I trying to say to you? I'm trying to say you can help and walk with people in their process of, of mental health, but you can't do it for them. You Straight. can't, if you overdo it, it would be just like Simon trying to do the work of G, that only Jesus could do. That's great. That's really, really good. And yeah, and friends, I wanted to also say that being in the room, being a friend is some of the best work you can do. If I could be honest, open, transparent for a second. Uh, three years ago, um, I lost my dad to cancer and it was one of those hard, depressing moments in my life. And I remember I had people that are just like, what do you need? What do you need? I'm here, what do you need? And I didn't know what I needed. I, I was just there, I was just being, I, I couldn't think straight, I, I didn't know. And one of the best things that I had for my life was this someone that sat with me in a room. Yeah. And they just were there. And if I wanted to talk about it, we could talk about it. And if I wanted to pray, they would pray. And if they wanted to, if I wanted us to go laugh and watch something funny, we would go and watch something funny. But I wanna encourage you, be that friend for people. Be the person that just sits in the room and, and is there for whatever they may be going through. And I think we also need to recognize we're humans in the room. Mm -hmm. we, we, are, we are humans in the room and we really, we can help people, we can have conversations, but for the Christians in the room, can I remind you of the God that's inside of you? That we, we only reason we can have these conversations is because Jesus has actually conquered mental health. And I want you guys to hear this for a second and Bonnie would love your even touch on this. There's a moment in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus is so stressed, so overburdened that he is sweating drops of blood. And, and Bonnie, you know the technical term for that, I don't. He, he's going against his own human biology. Remember when he walked on earth, he's in the same tent that we are. Yep. And so it is a great example of him overcoming something. He can equate with mental health at all stages. Absolutely. I don't know the technical term, so he put me on the spot. Dang it. I mean, I, I have a marketing degree. <laughs> I don't either. So <laughs> it's all good, but look it up. But uh, but but Jesus, he, he went through this process where his body were literally sweat turned to drops of blood. And the amount of stress, the amount of anxiety that he had to be going. And remember, it was the joy that was set before him. He, he went for you, he went for me, but friends, can I tell you, our God has walked through everything you have walked through. He's walked through moments of grief. Can I remind you of John 11, when Lazarus, his friend died, it says that Jesus wept like a nasty, cry, like snots, like he, he wept over humanity. He wept over the state of the earth. He was filled with grief. Like, I, I want you to hear tonight, you have a relatable savior. That, that Jesus, he's not up in heaven being perfect. 
Like, like he, he, he went through humanity. He is perfect. Don't clip that. He, he went through humanity. He lived a life, but friends, he conquered everything that you were walking through. And the only reason that we can have this conversation tonight is simply because Jesus has conquered everything that you're walking through. And maybe you're in the room tonight and you don't know Jesus, number one, we wanna introduce you to that Jesus. Um, we pointed to the cross earlier during worship, but Jesus, he, he came and lived a perfect life here on earth for 33 years, conquering death, hell, and the grave for you. He went to the cross for you so that you could be in relationship with him. But when we come into relationship with him, he also says that whom the son has set free, they are free indeed, that whatever held us down in our former life doesn't need to hold us any more. So we're, we're gonna pray for you tonight and then we're gonna have just some, some simple conversations in groups. If you are, aren't in groups tonight, I, I wanna encourage you, stick around for groups. I think this is the most important night that you can stick around for groups, to have a conversation, to sit with people, to actually hear what people are going through and pray. But we're gonna pray two prayers tonight. Number one, uh, I know this is that uh, God wants to be in relationship with you. Before he ever heals anything up here, he wants to heal everything in here. He wants to fix the heart issue between you and him. But also tonight, I wanna let you know, we also believe in supernatural healing. We believe that the name of Jesus is more powerful than anything on this earth, that he can set captives free, that anxiety can run, depression can run in the name of Jesus. And we're gonna pray for both tonight because it's not faith or medicine, it's faith and medicine. God heals through a variety of ways. So why don't you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you for uh, this place. God, we thank you for this conversation. God, we thank you, number one, for pastors that allow us to have conversations like this in church that aren't afraid of the hot topics, but we welcome them. And God, right now, I just wanna pray for every single person in the room tonight who, who doesn't know you, that they've walked into this church tonight and they don't know Jesus. They don't know the God that we've been talking about. And friends, if that's you tonight, I'm just gonna ask you, you're gonna slip your hand up. No one's looking around. I just wanna pray a prayer with you. And it's simply just saying, hey, I, I wanna accept Jesus into my life. And, if that's you tonight, I would just simply ask you to slip your hand up real quick. No one's looking around. Yep, I see it, I see it. Come on, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So collectively, we're just gonna pray this prayer together and it's found in uh, Romans chapter 10, verses nine and 10. It simply says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Christ has died and risen again, that you will be saved. So let's all say this prayer together and then we're gonna continue in prayer. But just repeat after me to say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I believe that you died and that you rose again. Come into my life, make me new and I will serve you the best I know for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. As we're continuing just to pray tonight, I know I got you. We're gonna pray one more prayer. Uh, but we also do wanna just pray for, for healing in the room tonight. And maybe you, you've stepped into this place and uh, you've been dealing with anxiety and depression or other mental health disorders. We, we believe that Jesus can heal in an instant tonight. So if, if you're in the room, and I know this is, a, this is a safe place and I would ask that everyone would respect this time. Uh, but with every head bowed, every eye closed, if, if you'd say, Alec, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling in this area. I, I would love prayer. I wanna pray for you real quick. So no one's looking around, simply just me. I just wanna pray, just wanna know who you are, wanna lift your hands. So that's you and you say, Alec, I'm, I'm struggling in this area. Come on, I see it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the vulnerability in the room. Jesus, we thank you. So God, right now, I just pray for every single person in the room tonight. God, we are all needing a touch from you. Jesus, we are not perfect. God, our, our minds are not perfect. God, we are always needing to be renewed, just like your word says in Romans 12, chapter two, that our minds are being renewed daily. So God, right now, I pray 
that God, you would do a supernatural work in the room, that God, that you would do some healing in the room tonight, that God, people would be set free, God, from the bondage of anxiety and depression. God, right now, we are believing in a supernatural healing God that he just has to speak one word and darkness has to flee. So Jesus, right now, we thank you for what you're doing in the room. God, we thank you for the healing that's taking place. And God, we also recognize in the room that you may want to heal through other ways. And God, we thank you for the healing that is about to come. God, I pray for my friends that uh, we would take a step. Like how we wouldn't be worried about the stigma of mental health or what people think about us, but God, we would take physical steps tonight. God, to make sure that we are getting the healing that we deserve. God, we love you. We thank you. Come on, and everyone said, amen, amen.